and a neurotoxin, though. It's been linked to stroke risk, age-related hearing loss, birth defects, miscarriages, blood clots, cognitive decline, depression, the list goes on and on. And you know, this is data from 2001. We've got new data now. 2002, new study came out. You know, meat eaters were stuck up at 12. Not so hot. Vegetarians, ovo vegetarians, had an average homocysteine level of 17, though, and vegans, 27. Oof. All right. So, two questions, right? One, why the heck are we so high? And two, how the heck do we get rid of it? Well, homocysteine is a natural byproduct of amino acid metabolism, meaning it builds up in every single person every single day on this earth, and our body has three ways by which, by which it gets rid of this stuff, three pathways by which it neutralizes this toxic substance into less harmful substrates. Pathway number one involves a vitamin called vitamin B6. Pathway number two involves a dietary component called choline. And you know, pathway three actually uses two vitamins. One's called folic acid or folate, and the other is called vitamin B12. Pretty much everyone gets enough vitamin B6. It's found widely through animal and plant food. Same thing with choline, found widely through the animal and plant kingdom. But you know, folate is found almost exclusively in plant foods, and this vitamin B12, as many of you know, is found almost exclusively in animal-derived foods. This, folate, is the reason why meat-eaters are stuck up at 12, right? They're just not eating enough fruits and vegetables, not getting enough folic acid. But this, vitamin B12, is the reason we have such terrible rates of hyperhomocysteinemia, or we have such dangerous levels of homocysteine. More and more evidence is accumulating that we, vegetarians and vegans, are just not getting enough vitamin B12 to adequately lower our homocysteine levels. And it turns out for vegans, some vegans aren't even getting enough B12 to avoid the classic B12 deficiency disease. Right? It used to be thought, ah, you don't need to worry about your B12 because you need so little and, and you know, it's kind of on everything and you store it up for years. What's the big deal? Severe irreversible brain damage. That's the big deal. <laughs> well, what, what about herbivores like gorillas, right? They don't take no B12. They seem to be doing pretty good. Well, they also eat bugs, dirt, and feces. <laughs> if you also want to eat bugs, dirt, you may also not have to worry about your B12. But if, for whatever reason, you choose not to, you need to get your B12, contrary to popular vegan myth, clinical B12 deficiency, meaning symptomatic B12 deficiency, is not uncommon. And I will spare you the gruesome, scary stories of the vegans that have died, went blind, were paralyzed because of not enough B12. I mean, do we want articles in the medical literature published with titles like subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord in a 14-year-old due to a strict vegan diet? This poor vegan kid in Philly got paralyzed, right? Even one of these is way too many, right? So the evidence is perfectly clear. You either eat B12 fortified foods or take B12 supplements. Right? Well, I don't need fortified foods there, partner, because I get, I get all the B12 I need from, from fermented foods like tempeh and miso and, and sea vegetables. No, you don't. It used to be thought that lots of plant foods had B12 in it, but actually we were using a faulty test. We were using a test that didn't differentiate between active B12 and these so-called inactive B12 analogs, which look like B12 to the test, but actually unusable by our body. So it actually, if we do take in these, this B, these B12 analogs, it may actually kind of clog up our B12 machinery and act as anti-B12. Wait a second, can't I just go into my organic backyard garden and kind of pull up a carrot and not scrub all the dirt off? If I may turn your attention to one of the most prestigious sources of vegetarian nutrition, it's the Vegetarian Nutrition and Health Letter out of Loma Linda University. March 2002, they had a great article called The 10 Most Common Myths About Vegetarian Diets, and myth number one was, drum roll please, <laughs> vegetables grown in B12-rich soil can meet vitamin B12 needs. It's a myth. It's not true. 
Okay, so I'll get into the nitty gritty exactly how we should get our B12 in just one moment. I cannot help but mention one last study. The results from a really landmark study were released last year at the Congress by this Australian researcher who took all these vegetarians who had low B12 levels and had them fill out a well-being questionnaire, kind of how you're feeling, how you're doing, what's your mood, and then gave them B12 for a couple months and then had them come back, fill out the survey again, and found that those whose B12 levels rose had highly significant improvements in well-being compared to like the sugar pill group. Right? So, um, and they felt better. They just had more reserve energy. In fact, my favorite anecdote is from Alex Hershef. He's the president of Farm, founded Meat Out Day, president of the Animal Rights Conferences. He, uh, he told me he was feeling tired and sluggish. Then he took his B12 and it was like, wham, in his words, quote, the effect was almost immediate and remarkable. My stamina and energy level are up and I feel middle-aged again instead of a tired old man. <laughs> so take your B12. Odds are you'll feel better. Right? Your homocysteine levels will go down and you'll reduce your risk of getting paralyzed, demented, and dead. All for just pennies a day. You cannot get too much B12. Um, you just kind of get expensive urine. Um, so you, there, you cannot take too much B12. Now, your body can only absorb a certain amount, so you can't just go a couple months and take a whole bottle, right? But um, you need a regular, reliable source. But no, you cannot get too much B12. You just kind of excrete it out. And no, in fact, pregnant women really need to get B12 because they're getting B12 for two. Right. What about lacto-ovos? Well, ovo-lacto-vegetarians, those who eat eggs and dairy regularly, probably get enough B12 to avoid the outright B12 deficiency disease, but aren't getting enough B12 to adequately lower their homocysteine levels. It's kind of like vitamin C and scurvy. To avoid scurvy, the vitamin C deficiency disease, you just need like six milligrams of vitamin C a day. It's like nothing, right? Now, but if you actually want a functioning immune system and all the other wonderful things that vitamin C in foods does, well, you need it like 10 times that, like 60 or 100 milligrams a day. See, that which you need to avoid deficiency is not necessarily what you need for optimum health. The same thing with vitamin B12. About 25% of all ovo-lacto-vegetarians have a functional B12 deficiency, meaning their homocysteine levels are just too high. And that figure may be more like 80% for vegans who've been vegan for two or more years. So B12 deficiency is actually not uncommon at all in the vegetarian community, but it needn't be so. Right? Nothing's written in stone. All we need to do is get our B12. And, there was, and the studies have um, already been published. You take a whole bunch of vegetarians and vegans, you give them B12, and wham! Their homocysteine levels drop like a rock down to eight. Not up at 12? No. The only reason the meat eaters are stuck up at 12 is because they're not eating enough fruits and vegetables, right? But we can take advantage of our folate intake, right? And as soon as we get our B12, wham, down to 8, down into the safety zone. Right. And meat eaters are catching on. This, uh, in a recent study called Vegan Diet-Based Lifestyle Program Rapidly Lowers Homocysteine Levels. They took these vegans, I'm mean, sorry, excuse me, they took these meat eaters, put them on a vegan diet for one week. One freaking week! And found that those with the highest homocysteine levels had their homocysteine levels drop by over 20%, right? The vegan diet is like magic. But now these were meat eaters, so they're like B12 coming out their ears, right? I mean, but, uh, and so but all they need was some fruits and vegetables to bring their homocysteine levels down. But imagine what we could do. We get our flax, get rid of those oils, take our B12 on top of our cholesterol levels, our, our blood pressure and all that. We are just going to walk all over. All right. So what we need to do to fight homocysteine, vitamin B12 in fortified, B12 fortified foods or supplements. If you want to do supplements, there's kind of two ways you can do them, weekly or daily. Probably the simplest method is to chew up one B12 tablet containing 2,000 micrograms or more once a week. So you can go down to Green Star Co-op and get these 5,000 microgram tablets. And so you can cut them in half and just take one half of one of those pills once a week. Share a bottle with your friends. Comes out to be about five bucks a year. Pick a day of the week. You know, I know my B12 day is Monday. I know every Monday I gotta update the Mad Cow page, take my B12. You know, it's kind of part of my life. You know, that's what. Um, B12 is indeed water soluble. So it's a staple. You can take it once in a week, and that's enough. Um, you can, uh, if you take high enough doses, you can take once a week because your liver actually stores it up. 
Although you can certainly, if you don't like to take, if it's hard for you to remember to take something once a week, and rather get in the habit of taking something once a day, then you have to take much less, 100 micrograms once a day. So if you have a multivitamin or something you take once a day, you should check to see if it has 100 micrograms or more of vitamin B12. And all B12, thank you for that question, all B12 in supplements and fortified foods is vegan. It's bacteria derived. It's all, they, they just put it in a stainless steel, sta stainless steel tank. None of it is animal derived. It's just too expensive. So having said that, some of the other filler ingredients might not be vegetarian. It might have gelatin in the capsule or something. Right. But, but the B12 itself is vegan. All right. Now, for those of you who don't like taking supplements, well, you can get all the vitamin B12 you need by eating forti B12 fortified foods. The only thing you have to remember is if you rely exclusively on B12 fortified foods, you need to get at least two servings a day, separated by like six hours. So if in the morning you have a cup of B12 fortified soy milk, then, you know, in the afternoon or, or evening you can have something else with, with B12, like a teaspoon of the 